Romans, and notice in Romans chapter 15 first, then we're going to go to the book of Matthew. Romans 15. Wherefore, uh, verse 7, Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God, of God. Now, I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. I want you to look down with me and go or look back in chapter 9. Whose are the fathers? In chapter 9, verse 3, For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the given of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh. Christ is earthly ministry now. Christ came concerning the flesh. Christ came who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Now the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ had to do with him coming and confirming promises made unto the fathers. And the fathers are Israelites. He said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. But then he says, I am come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came unto his own, his own received him not. And so Jesus Christ's earthly ministry has to do with the nation Israel. It has to do with a kingdom that was promised to them by God Almighty. Uh, you find it in Deuteronomy. In fact, turn back to Deuteronomy and look in Deuteronomy before we go to Matthew and look in Deuteronomy. And Moses is telling Israel verse 11 but the land where, where you go to possess it is the land of hills and valleys and drink of the water of the rain of heaven a land which the Lord thy God careth for the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Come over in verse 21. That your days may be multiplied. And the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. As the days of heaven were upon the earth. That's what they're looking for, that land and the days, the days of heaven, heaven on earth. Now you got a group of people that goes around and they come to you and they'll quote that verse and say, you want to stay on, have heaven on earth. And I say, no. Don't, why would I want that? But Israel wants that. Look over in Daniel. Uh, let's see. Before you go there, look in verse 10 of chapter 12 of Deuteronomy. I just happened to... Verse 10. When ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit. And when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about so that ye dwell in safety. That's what they've always desired. Someday they will get it. Look in Daniel. In Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. In 
in verse he's talking about the kingdom now he's talking about uh, the beast that Daniel saw his feet and his toes and uh, verse 44 and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. And he goes on, he said he saw, uh, look back in verse uh, 35. In 35, and uh, then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broken to pieces. Verse 34, thou sawest till a stone, that stone's Christ, was cut out without hands, which smote the image of the, his feet, that there were uh, iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, mountain in the Bible, a kingdom, and filled the whole earth and then them days when that the Lord comes, that's the second coming, the stone. He's going to crush the nations and the kingdoms of this world and the Antichrist. And he's going to set up a kingdom. And then in that kingdom, there's going to be rest and safety for Israel at least a thousand years, a millennial. And we call it the millennial reign of Christ. And six times in Revelation chapter 20, he mentions that thousand year reign of Christ. And David's going to sit upon the throne and Jesus Christ is going to reign over this earth and over the nations for 1,000 years. And Israel is going to be his ministers in that kingdom, look in Isaiah. We're going to get to Matthew. Now look in Isaiah. I go to Isaiah 61. In Isaiah 61, and notice what he says there. Isaiah 61 and verse 5. Isaiah 61 verse 5. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen. That's Gentiles, nations, and your vine dressers. Now watch verse 6. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat of uh, uh, the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye you boast yourselves. Folks, there ain't no doubt about it. They're going to be the priest of the Lord someday. And they're going to be the ministers that God will use on this earth. And Gentiles will come to God through that nation, that new nation of priests. I'm not reading this out of Sears and Roebuck. There is no Sears and Roebuck no more. I don't gas catalog. This is the Bible. This is what the Bible's saying. It's going to happen. Uh, look over in, turn over in Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. I'm sorry, 65. And look what he says here in Isaiah 65. He said in verse 17. Uh, <clears throat> For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice for ever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Boy, it ain't that way now. 
Look on, he goes, there shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And it goes on down there, look, verse 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like a bullock. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? Come over verse 7. Before she travailed, Israel, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. You'll find that man-child in Revelation over there. It's called a man-child, I think, in chapter 2. Then he goes on, Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travail, she brought forth her children. And folks, a nation was born in Acts chapter 2 when the Spirit of God came. That's that new nation of priests that uh, Israel was supposed to be. In fact, look back in Exodus and notice in Exodus, I like to say, we'll get to uh, Matthew. <laughs> But in Exodus, look in 19, Exodus 19. And notice what he says in Exodus 19, verse 5. He said in verse 5, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of what? Priest, a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses called, uh, came and called the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him about being a peculiar treasure, about being a holy nation, about being the priest. But Israel did not keep that covenant. Israel did not, they he broke the covenant uh, that God had made and they would not keep it according to Hebrews chapter 8. Now notice something. Look at this uh, uh, treasure. Look in Psalms 135. People say that's the church. Well, you couldn't be further from the truth. Notice in Psalms 135. I believe that's right. Uh, <clears throat> eh, let me get there. Can't get there in Isaiah, can I? All right. Psalms 135. Verse 4. The Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. There ain't no doubt about the treasure and the jewels that he's going to make up in Mal Malachi. It has to do with the treasure, it's the treasure hid in a field. Jesus spoke the parable, and that treasure is a new nation, and it's Israel. Everybody clear? Anybody got any questions about that? Israel. And they was to be a kingdom of priests. And that nation was started in Acts chapter 2. It started out as the little flock, the twelve. And it began to grow and grew and it just grew. And up to 9,000, I think, 5,000, 4,000 was saved. Now look at this thing. Turn over with me. Uh, let's go back to Matthew. I'm sorry. Let's go over to Peter first. Then we'll go to Matthew. Look in Peter. Peter writes about it. Notice what he says here in chapter 1. In chapter 1, 
He said in verse 19, <clears throat> he's talking about, uh, yeah, uh, precious, but with the pre- being redeemed, with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's Christ. Come down who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was made, was manifest in these last times for you. Come to verse 23. Being born again, <clears throat> not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. That born again, there's the new nation. They're born again. Uh, it's not individual, it's a national thing. Uh, come on down in chapter 2. In chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. A holy what? Priesthood. Uh, to offer up spiritual sacrifices. <clears throat> acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Come over to verse 9. In verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation against that uh, wicked and adulterous generation, the Pharisees and the scribes. The Lord told them, said, the kingdom shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof in Matthew 21. And so he took that nation away from that uh, ungodly, wicked, adulterous generation and he pulled out of that 12 men, they became the little flock. They was the nation, a holy nation. And they're the kingdom of priests right there that began. And he said in verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Peculiar people, just like he said in Exodus 19, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now they are to offer up spiritual sacrifices, and that has to do with recognizing who the Lamb was. That's what the book of Hebrews is all about. And Hebrews is wrote to Hebrews. And in the book of Hebrews, they're showing that the blood of bulls and goats could not take away the sin. But God offered a lamb. He offered His Son as the lamb without spot. And when that first John 1, 9, confess your sins, He's faithful and just. They would confess their sins in light of a lamb that had died for, believing that He was the Lamb of God. But you today, you don't have a lamb that died for you. You have the man Christ Jesus that went to the cross and died for all your sins. Your sins is paid for. And they'll ne- he'll never deal with them again. So well, everybody's saved then. No, no, everybody's not saved because everybody hadn't received the love of the truth. That they might be saved. And for this cause, Paul said in 2 Thessalonians, for this cause, cause they would not receive the love of the truth, God's going to send them strong delusions and they're going to believe the lie that they might all be damned. Folks, I want to tell you, it's serious business. You know that? People don't realize how serious it is. You know what people are doing today with religion and stuff? They're playing Russian roulette with their own soul. The Lord said, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Your soul is very important. Your soul and your spirit that God gave you and he created you in the image of himself, mankind, and God Almighty, one day you go, your soul as, and spirit is going to leave that body and it's going to the destination that you choose for it. 
And if you reject the salvation of the Lord and you reject the eternal life that He is offering you by trusting His Son, then you will burn in the lake of fire for all eternity and you will lose your soul. You'll lose that image that you're in. You won't be in the same image that you, your soul is now. You'll be in the image of your father, Satan. That's serious. People don't even think about eternity. They plan for the, their retirements. They plan for this, plan for that. Have you ever stopped to wonder about eternity? I asked a man one time, he kept saying, well, I'm going to do this when I retire. And I said, well, what are you going to do then? And he said, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a little garden. I'm gonna, well, what are you going to do after that? I mean, it just kept on. And he said, finally, he just got out. He said, I, think, I guess I'll die. And I said, well, what are you going to do then? Folks, that's the question. What are you going to do when God rises up and demands an answer from you? What are you going to do when you stand before the holy and righteous God that created you? Created this world. Created everything that you see. He's God and He says, beside me there is no other. I've never seen nobody like me. That's what he says in Isaiah. He's God. And one day, everybody in here will bow before the Lord Jesus Christ and confess that He is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I bow now. I one day I will. But if you lost, you will bow. But it won't be for your salvation. Serious business. Serious. These people had a ministry that is unique in that there is the true nation of Israel. Look back in Galatians and Galatians chapter 6. And that's who Peter writes to, that new nation. Look what he says and Paul says in verse 14, but God uh, forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. That new creature is the body of Christ. That new creature is the God creating a body made up of Gentiles and Jews and Gentiles that see themselves a sinner and trust what Christ did on the cross for them. Verse 16, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The Israel of God at that time was Peter, James, and John. They were the little flock. They're the ones of the Acts 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that was saved. That was the true Israel of God. And Peter writes and ministers unto them. And that little flock will be completed. Turn to Revelation chapter 1. Man, I, I, I will get to Matthew. I... But look in Revelation chapter 1. People want to try to put us in Revelation. While the body of Christ is not in Revelation. Look in Revelation chapter 1. 
Verse 1 tells you who it's wrote to. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, Jesus Christ, the revelation which God gave unto him, to show unto his what? Servants, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So John was his servant, and John wrote it down, but it was for the servants. Well, who are the servants? Turn to chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7. In verse 3, Revelation 7, 3, saying, Hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the earth. Not what it says, is it? All the tribes of Israel. And there are 12 of them. And he lists down through there all 12. The 12 tribes of Israel are the servants. Why? They're going to fulfill up the priesthood. And they're called that. I think it's in chapter, uh, go over to chapter 5, I believe it is. Well. Let me get there. Look in verse 10. Chapter 5 verse 10. And hath made us unto our God kings and what? Priest. And we shall reign on the earth. They're connected with the earth. They're ministers. Isaiah said they'd be ministers of God. The holy priesthood. And he writes to them and he's showing them what they're going to have to go through. Look in chapter 20. In chapter 20, notice in verse 6. Let me go back and read verse 4. And I saw thrones. And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, which hath not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead, for or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ how long? Thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Is that the second coming of Christ? Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and they shall reign with him a thousand years. Now folks you couldn't have missed that if you tried. Israel that 144,000 is the ones that Revelation is wrote to and it's the priesthood and Peter and them was a part of it and it began in Acts chapter 2. That's when that nation was born. Folks, everybody wants to say the church started in Acts chapter 2. The church did not start in Acts chapter 2. The church started when Paul got saved. And he said in me first. He was the first that Jesus Christ saved by grace plus nothing. And people don't like that. You see, you're taking their gold out of the street and heaven and the water out of their baptistries and you're taking away their doctrines that they love and the traditions they've always had. And they don't like that. 
Well, just believe the Bible. Because let me tell you something. When you stand before the Lord, the Lord ain't going to have no church covenant up there to read that you see hanging on the back of churches. The Lord ain't going to have some book that he, that some man said that God Almighty told me this is what, this is extra revelations from the Lord. No, you know what the Bible says? The Bible, Paul said, and last of all, he was seen of me. The last person that Jesus Christ showed himself to on this earth was the Apostle Paul, and he wrote down 13 books for the body of Christ and their doctrine and how to live and people reject that. Why? Well, because preachers can't keep their thumb on people and can't control them without the whip of the law. And Paul says we're not under the law but under grace. In fact, the Lord says through Paul, why judgest thou thy brother? To his own master he standeth or falleth. The Lord's the one you got to deal with, not me. I'm just here as his spokesman preaching the word. So I'm going to do what I want to do. You're going to do that anyway. People do what they want to do. People come to church. You know why they don't come? They don't want to. They got something else better that they look at it better to do. But that's okay. Thank God you're here. I'm not the one you ought to deal with. But the Lord is. Everybody will stand. We must all, the body of Christ, stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged of sins? No. Your sins was judged at Calvary. God will never judge you for your sins. He don't even see that. When God said He took them away, Jesus Christ took them away, He took them away. They're as far as the east is from the west. And people want to say that he's cast them, you ever heard that? In the sea of forgetfulness. Well, they're trying to quote that verse, but that's not what the verse says, but anyway. He don't remember them. He don't see them. You know what he sees when he sees you? He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Who is he that can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. You're not condemned. You're saved by the grace of God, standing in the grace that God gives you and being just, just as though you never sinned. That's grace. Well, if I believed like you do, I'd go rob a bank. You'd rob one anyway if you wasn't afraid of getting caught. You mean to tell me that if I go out here, I'm saved, and I go out here and I shoot somebody that I don't like, I'd go to heaven if you're saved. But you'll stop off at the prison for a while. You'll spend the rest of your life there and then go on. State of North Carolina, the Lord forgave all sin, but state of North Carolina, there are some things they don't forgive. You have to pay for them yourself. That's one of them. All I want you to see is, folks, God condemned His Son. We have a different ministry than Peter, James, John. We live in a different time. 
Jesus Christ was confirming the promises made unto the fathers about a kingdom. Now go to Matthew and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this up. I'm just going to call it whatever Robbie puts down on the <laughs> two programs or Peter versus Paul. I, it don't matter. But look, look at Matthew. In Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 17. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> is at hand. Look in verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. He's preaching. <clears throat> in verses 5, 6, and 7, He gives the, doc the laws of the kingdom. Now notice some things about it. Come over with me in verse, uh, in chapter 6. He tells them how to pray. In verse 10, he says, Thy what to come? What are we waiting on? Are we waiting on a kingdom? No. We're to wait on Christ coming. We are waiting on Him to come. Matter of fact, I'll just read the verse right quick. In Philippians, he says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, Verse 10, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. We're, we're already delivered from that wrath that the 144,000 is going to be facing. We're already delivered from that. Why? He bore our wrath. He took our death. He took our sin. We're in Him. Our life is in Christ. And Christ is in God. We, He, and when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, we shall appear with Him in glory. We bypass the wrath. But these people, look here, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. When the days of heaven on earth, as Deuteronomy 11 said, verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Exodus 16, 35. Revelation 13, 17. Look in Revelation, it's closer, Revelation 13. And look in verse 17. Why are they going to have to, the Lord's going to have to feed them. Revelation in verse uh, 16 says, And He calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on, in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And folks, there are three things there that they are going to, they got to have at least one of them. They're going to have to receive a mark in their right hand. And, and unless they have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And he counts up the number of 666. I'm not going to go into that, but why can't they have to have that in order to buy or sell? 
They won't be able to buy their bread. They won't be able to buy clothes. And they're going to be like the children in the wilderness. The 144,000 is coming out of a group. And God, the, that nation over there, the woman of Revelation 12 is the nation Israel. And they're going down in there out of that nation the priesthood's coming God took one tribe and made them a king of a priest for the rest of the nation and so that's what it's going to be again he's going to pull 144,000 along with those in Acts 2, 3, 4 they go going to be the priesthood and he's pulling them out of the nation and he's going to feed that nation they're going up into heaven in mid trip they're sitting on uh, Revelation 14 they're up there in Mount Zion and they're looking down and the nation of Israel that will be saved God's going to feed them and give them their daily bread and they're to pray thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven It'll never happen to you in your lifetime. Evil men and seducers is waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. When they cross peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman. This world is headed for the wrath of God and in pains and agony. You don't have to be there. If you've never been saved, you don't want to be left behind if the church goes today. Trust in what He did for you. Next week, I want to go back. I want to look at their commission. I want to look at their ministry. And we'll continue this. So, well, I won't be here. Well, you just miss it. Let's stand.